The heresy of replacement theology is of Satan and crept into the church after the passing of the apostles. Briefly stated, it is that due to the fact that the nation of Israel through its leaders rejected Jesus as their Messiah, God poured out his wrath on them in 70 AD, destroying their nation and their temple. He has washed his hands of them, leaving them with no purpose whatsoever as a nation because of their rebellion against God in their rejection of Jesus. God has replaced Israel with the church, transferring the blessings promised to Israel to the church. And those who believe in it constitute the majority of professing Christians today. They deny that God has any special plans for the Jewish people in the end times. To them, the regathering of the Jews and the reestablishment of Israel are simply accidents of history with no spiritual significance. Beloved, it is this terrible lie that has haunted Christianity throughout the ages. It is from the pit of hell and poisons a Christian's understanding of the scriptures and their walk and life in Christ. The unconditional covenant made with Abraham by God. Now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Beloved, God says he will curse such a rejecter of Israel. Do you know anyone who lives this way? Heresy is of the devil who works through the old dead flesh and nature of believers. The love of Christ being silent in this murder of the Jew and Israel is a denial of God's word. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. To die as a believer is to be in sin, which causes loss of fellowship with God our Father. To live is to live by the Holy Spirit in us and the truth of the word. The two natures, one from above and one earthly, live side by side, beloved. Let us live in him by his word. Then we experience the true life of Christ in us. Let it be without prejudice and without false teachings that we have been subjected to by deceivers. Let's look at the church at Ephesus as a starting point to understand our heritage. The church in Ephesus was made up largely of Gentiles. Paul informs them of the blessings of God that came through the Jew whom God chose and made the doorway to salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, who was a Jew. God made known this great blessing to the Gentiles during his ministry on earth. Jesus revealed this great blessing during that time. Speaking to the Samaritan woman, a Gentile, our Lord spelled out God's plan for her and all Jews and Gentiles who would be his. This was fulfilled at the cross and by his resurrection and completed by the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Jesus said to her woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, 
When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I, who speak to you, am he. Now the Holy Spirit further speaks through Paul and Ephesians. And you has he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. Beloved, to deny Israel and to take the promises that God made to ourselves is covetousness and is a sin. This replacement theology incorporates this sin of covetousness as well as a hatred of the Jews. All the covenants God made with Israel belong to Israel. God promised the children of Israel, the land of Israel, all of it. They will get it one day not on their terms, nor those of Gentile nations, but of God. This is Israel in the future. The promise God made to the church, composed of Jew and Gentile, is found in John 14, verses 1 to 3. I go to prepare a place for you. This place God has made for his church is above the new Jerusalem, in his Father's house, the limitless galaxies he made, and we, the Bride of Christ, will live in the new Jerusalem above. But now, beloved, we are strangers and pilgrims, serving in the Holy Spirit, if we be saved in him. Not Israel, nor do we have any rights to promises made by God to Israel, which God will keep. Those who teach replacement theology teach a heresy of Satan full of anti-Semite poison that infects individual Christians and their ability to understand scripture, binding the Holy Spirit in this unconfessed sin. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Powerful, deceptive, having great guile, most subtle, a tempter, a liar, a murderer, most beautiful, having the power of death and destruction under God, and can appear as an angel of light, as we see in so many of these false teachers. By teaching these lies to others, and viewing the very scriptures themselves without Israel, in her proper place in God's program, is it any wonder that Bible prophecy has become such a bloody battlefield, totally lacking the love of Christ, as well as the sense of the truth of the whole of God's word, which greatly divides the true body of Christ and leads to terrible dissensions and spiritual harm. One cannot understand the whole of God's word unless we read Israel as Israel and the church as the church. Each has a place in God's eternal destiny for mankind. Speaking to us in prophetic truths, our Lord has told us the following about his plans for the nation Israel and its faithful at the close of the great tribulation that is on our horizon, which many of us see. 
In that day, I will restore David's full intent. I will repair its broken places, restore its ruins, and build it as it used to be. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it in their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. This is what the Lord says, he who appoints the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar, the Lord Almighty is his name. Only if these decrees vanish from my sight, declares the Lord. Will the descendants of Israel ever cease to be a nation before me? This is what the Lord says, only if the heavens above can be measured and the foundation of the earth below be searched, will I reject all the descendants of Israel because of all they have done declares the Lord. And so all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer will come out of Zion, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Beloved, May God richly bless the reading of his word. In Jesus' name, I pray.